Okay. Okay. Hello. Good evening. Can you all see me now? Yes. I think you can now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you can hear me. Yes. That's good. Yes. Okay. Good evening. Good. Good. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> so today we are going to do something different. Okay. Today there's a uh, different topic. It, we're still looking at uh, mechanical properties. We're still looking at uh, mechanical properties now, right? So the agenda for today is uh, uh, we're going to look at material plastic behavior. Uh, but at, at any time, if you, if my voice disappear, let me know. Okay, don't let me carry on without uh, hearing my voice. Then we are going to in a material plastic behavior. We are going to look at. Uh, strain hardening right and then in 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 plastic behavior of materials temperature is a fact temperature is a factor whether is it elastic or plastic okay but i'm going to look at uh material plastic behavior uh with the effect of heat and then we're going to look at uh strain rate effect okay so what i'm trying to do today is to relate mechanical properties okay with the value what do i mean by that okay as engineer what we will tend to do in in the real world is we are give we are always asked to make a certain product right and the first thing we are asked is what material the second question we will ask is how hard okay and today i'm going to show you that this two, the the first question, the first question on what material is a good question. The how hard aspect might not be that wonderful. Okay, that question is not necessary. Okay, so let's look at strain hardening first. Okay, let's look at strain hardening. So let's recap where we finish off last week. Okay, let's recap where. So if we look at uh, strain hardening now. So we have a stress ring curve, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to draw my stress ring curve bigger than this. So we have our uh, stress ring curve. So we are going to focus on the plastic region. Over here, we have epsilon, we have stress. So this is PL. So this means it's plastic region. And then we have a, we have a behavior of the material going in that trend. So over here, we wrote a relationship last week. So the relationship that we wrote last week is stress PL is equal to A plus B epsilon pl how of n and by looking at the equation okay and by looking at this graph we know that over here this is our a constant right and the gradient over here which is the strain hardening behavior is controlled by b and n okay we cannot take out b we cannot isolate b and see what's the effect of n we cannot isolate n and see what's the effect of b they are coupled together okay they are they are, they are coupled together in that context so let me let me do a quick recap so a is is the plastic stress or initial flow stress, okay? We, we, we can call this as initial flow stress. B is our strain hardening uh, coefficient. And N, I'm going to write our N down here, is our strain hardening index.
Um, sir, I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, I also have a class with you on Saturdays. Um, this really, this looks really similar to what we were learning on that class of uh, what was it? Strength of materials. Are yeah, they... it's not the same strength of material. We are looking at elastic. This we are going to plastic. Okay. 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 It's not. It's not. It's not the same. Okay. Right. So a value over here is is equivalent. Okay, to the hardness. Okay, so there's a relationship with, with the A value and the hardness. Okay, so the A value does not mean A value is equal to hardness. No, if, if the higher the A value means the hardness is higher. Okay, now we're going to look at a few different materials now. Okay, uh, we're going to look at uh, the, the, the steel family. So I'm going to introduce you to a few uh, materials now. So we're going to look at an example. Okay, we're, we're going to look at an example. So we're going to have material. Okay, so we're going to look at material. So the material, the first material we're going to, we're going to look at, okay, is AISI 1045. Okay, so this is usually known as our benchmark. Benchmark is usually a reference material. So a lot of companies have, have a reference material. So for now, we're going to take AISI uh, 1045. Can anyone tell me what does AISI stand for, please? Anyone? What does? American yep. Institute of Standard, I don't know. <laughs> no, anyone else? Come on, where are my material signs? Where are you guys? What American Iron and Steel Institute. Yeah, American Iron and Steel Institute. You pronounce it as AISI 1045, okay? One year I was teaching this class and this is this is in uh maybe 2012, 2013. A student came and asked me, Eugene, ISO 1045, is it difficult or easy? I look at the student. What is ISO 1045? What do you mean? You say ISO 1045. And during those days, you know, the Paris that's bombing, right? So I thought there's a terrorist group coming to bomb us at 1045, you know? So don't call it ISO 1045, okay? It's AISI 1045, okay? There you go. So don't 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 read really as a word. You scare the living daylight out of me. Then the next material that we're going to look at is Uzbo. Okay, Uzbo. Uh, 1500. Okay. Then we're going to look at uh, another material, which is a dual face steel. Okay, dual face steel. 600, right? And then we are going to look at trip. 800. Then yeah, we're going to look at trip 800. So this week, I'm going to introduce to you the mechanical properties of this material. Right. Next week, we'll relate with the microstructure, we'll relate with the chemical composition of all this material, and how we make decisions in manufacturing by looking at the chemical composition and like looking at the microstructure. But today, we're going to focus on the mechanical behavior, uh, mechanical properties. So the example is on mechanical properties. Oh, sorry. So this, we're going to look at mechanical properties, okay? So the next line, we're going to look at is the A value. Okay, the A value, and it's in MPA, megapascal. So for, for 1045, you have 553.1. Okay, so there is the A value. For Uzbo, is 1040, right? 
And then for dual phase steel, is 120. And then for trip steel, is 412. Okay. Now we are going to come up with a very uh, primitive way of ranking this material. Okay, we, we will come up with a very primitive way. So we're going to come up with a not not primitive. This ranking system has been has been used. Okay, so we are going to look at a, a a ranking system. Okay, we're going to look at ranking. No, this color is not very good. I can't see it because I'm partial color blind. So I'm going to get rid of it. So we're going to look at a. Uh, a uh, ranking system. All right. So this ranking system is uh, one is most difficult. And then because there's only four material, four is easy okay most difficult easy to what to, to deform okay to deform okay so so to to deform so they, that's our ranking system so with this ranking system right we so so the first question we will ask is what material so this this first column is what material? So you, when, when we are asked to make certain product, is we ask what material? The diary is AISI 1045, Oosbo 1500, dual phase steel, so and so forth. Then the next question we ask is what? How hard? Yes or no? So how hard is equivalent to what? The A value. Okay. So by looking at the A value, can someone tell me which material is most difficult? Which is number uno? Which is number one, please? Anyone? Usable fifteen hundred. right. So this is this is number one, and how about number two? AISI ten forty five. Thank you, number two, and this is our number three. Not so far away, and then this is our number four. So in most companies. Or, or any engineering firm, we have a ranking system. Okay, we have a ranking. So this ranking system is relative to our charge. How much are we going to charge to deform this material? Okay, so for example, our benchmark material to deform is $2. So this one, we come up with $2. Okay, $2, right? And then we look at Uzba because it's twice its strength. We say, hey, this requires a lot of work. Okay, I'm going to charge $4. Right, and then, and then number three. Okay, this is not so far away. The trip and ten forty five five by three by one four one two. This one I'm gonna charge two dollars also. Okay, and uh, one at one twenty. Maybe I charge fifty cent. Okay, it's soft. I think it's soft for now. Okay, so this is what you were you we were we were tend to as I said. These are just arbitrary number. It's just it's just a, a case that that I want to highlight by, by looking at A value is very risky, okay? Right, so this is based on what? A material, okay? Or, or so A not, A, this is based on the hardness. So this A, which is the initial flow stress is equivalent to hardness. So you have that ranking system is because one is the hardest, we put $4, Two, our benchmark is $2. Three, uh, ranking number three is $2 because 4, 1, 2, and 5, 5, 3.1 are not far away. And the last one, 4, is 50 cents. Okay, then the next one we look at. Okay, so now we start looking at what? We start looking at B. Okay. Okay. So B, which is our uh, strain hardening coefficient now in megapascal, now this is 600.8, okay. then it comes to 4630, whoa, look at this number one, right? Then look at 1020, and the last one is 2153. 
Okay. So now when you look at this number, you're like, uh, B is what? B and N, it describe, it's describing this region now. Okay, B and N, we, 